All right, I am back. I'm going to be talking about Airbnb and social media, um, making money with it with Alicia Arnold. So she is an Airbnb pro um, and a pro at using social media to get more short-term rental bookings at her property. So I cannot wait for her to join us today. That is what we're going to be talking about. So I think she is here. Um, so let me bring her on. And for those of you just joining me, go ahead and drop um, where you're from, uh, what city you're you're in, or where you're thinking of doing an Airbnb. There. All right. So, hey, Alicia. Hi. Am I saying your name right? Alicia. Alicia. All right. Great. Great. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I'm really, really excited to talk to you. Um, because I know you are a short-term rental pro and a lot of people that follow me, that is something they're interested in, right? Short-term rentals and Airbnb. Um, so go ahead and just tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. My background is in creative direction and marketing. So I help people start up and market their short-term rentals um, with a focus on social media and also like actually setting up the physical space and finding like the hook for your Airbnb to help market it. So that's really what I focus on. Um, I have a few Airbnbs myself. I'm actually in one of them right now uh, that I've been remodeling for the past probably like four months. And oh, wow. uh, yeah, and then I have one in uh, Kona, Hawaii. That oh, I... That's gotta be an awesome location. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm heading there. Um, on Saturday to kind of like do some work. Like I like, like to go and stay in my Airbnb so I can check and make sure everything is to my standards and just, you know, refill anything or spruce up the interior design while I'm there. Yeah, that is that is an awesome tip to actually like stay in your Airbnb, see what your um, guests are actually experiencing themselves. So you can be like, oh, this, this could be better. This could be different, right? Or I can yeah. improve this. Um, so that's really cool. So I, I definitely want to focus on the fact that you focus so heavily on social media, right? Um, and utilizing social media to, like you said, find that hook. So how did you, it sounds like your background is somewhat in marketing, but how did you um, kind of start to implement and use that strategy for your Airbnbs? Well, first, like I said, I try to find a hook and that's what I work with my clients on finding like if you if, even if your space is really beautiful, it's really nice to have some kind of like ocean views or wine country. Um, I have a few people that I collaborate with, like one has like a mermaid themed Airbnb, uh, one has llamas at their property. Um, there's another one that's called like Flown the Coop and it's all very like antiques and chickens and things like that. So I mean, yeah. you don't have to go that extreme, but you do want to find like what's special and why would people pick your listing out of everyone else's listing. Right. Um, and growing up social media following is really helpful in that and helping people figure out what there is to do once they get to your Airbnb, if they're not familiar with the area. So mm -hmm. um, restaurants to eat at, attractions, um, host tips, like all the amenities in your short-term rental and like making them shortcuts on your Instagram, like highlights. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. And just trying to like find a color scheme um, and things like that. And I have, uh, I have tools to teach people how to like set up like a color scheme and a, a style for their interior design, but then also like pull that through all of their social media marketing. Um, mm -hmm. Since branding is my background, I love to like activate that in the physical space as well as like, through this, the um, social media and if you have a website and things like that to pull it all through yeah. marketing materials. So it sounds like your whole goal is to get people away from the kind of cookie cutter Airbnb, right? That everyone just throws up the regular or degular, but you, or even if they have that kind of making sure that they still have some uniqueness to their Airbnb that is going to attract, you know, guests to want to stay there, right? Yeah. And most people actually do have something unique but they're not telling that story so like really like rallying around that story like is it a beach house or do you offer breakfast and no one else does um do you have special coffee that's from you know the area that you're in or 
Um, do you have a beach set up? Do you have, do you offer kids amenities? Do you mm. offer like all that kind of stuff? Like people have it, but they maybe aren't telling that story. Um, and a great place to start is to actually look through who's stayed in your Airbnb and really try to have a conversation with your guests about like, oh, hey, why are you in town? Like, is there anything we could do better? Uh, um, and like also reading through all your reviews and seeing what people have said and like what they've done while they've stayed there um, and think, and see if there's anything there that you can pull out to like build upon if you yeah. don't actually have that like hook or idea yet. Um, is good. I mean, you don't have to do anything like as extreme as like a Disneyland theme Airbnb. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like this rental is in wine country and I try to like on the Instagram account, like go to wineries and, and post it in the, sh in the um, highlights on my Instagram stories. And I also have a website where I do blog posts about like top 10 places to eat in the neighborhood. Um, it's a really, if you're active on Pinterest and you're using it for your business, um, for your short term rental business, it's really great to do like roundups of what's good in the area because then people yeah. and, and like uh, mention your Airbnb kind of at the end of it, like, oh, here's a great place to say, by the way, uh, because people <laughs> searching on Pinterest can, are looking for like what to do when they're vacationing in that area. So if they find your top 10 like bars or restaurants or like different yeah. uh, content like that it's a really great way to like lead people into uh, staying at your Airbnb. That's an awesome idea. So in terms of social media, do you feel like some channels do better than others? Like you mentioned Pinterest and we're here on Instagram, but um, are there any others that you kind of focus on or, or not? Um, I definitely focus on Pinterest and Instagram. Um, Pinterest is, actually a really unique social media channel in that it's more of a search engine than actually like, like, uh, you know, like a Facebook or an Instagram. Yeah. Um, and you can, I feel like you would probably get more bookings through creating that kind of evergreen content with only having to create the content once and then just let it do its thing until you have to mm -hmm. update it. Um, Instagram is always great too, um, because people can see pictures and, and you can do videos and you can store all of that stuff in your highlights, which is really fun and interesting for people that are like, um, staying at your property. So another thing is to like close the loop with, I would say like if Instagram is going to be your main thing that you use for, uh, your short term rental advertising, make sure in the property you have like the mention that you have that Instagram so that if, and like a hashtag so that if people are having a fun time in your space or you have like an Instagramable space, um, they can be posting or like post what they did in the area. And then you can even use that content for like building out those highlights of different like activities or how people are enjoying your space. Um, another great thing you can do is go through your guest book and find like really good reviews and pull a few out and you can add those to your story highlights too. Um, just oh, make that's like, kind of like a guest book highlight. Yeah. That's really powerful. I uh, mean, those are such powerful ways to just let people know that people really appreciate the small touches of your property and your short term rental, right? It's going to make your property stand out. Um, in in front of others right so that's that's really really great um so if you had well one thing i wanted to ask you like how did you start in short-term rentals like how did you start your journey i had a friend i had a few friends who were doing it um i live in when i started i was living in the san francisco bay area which is actually a it's a difficult place to do airbnbs there's a lot of rules there <laughs> But I had a friend, my best friend, in fact, um, she was in like a one bedroom, um, like really small apartment that she was renting. And she lived above Dolores Park. So like a really hot spot in San Francisco. And she would lock the doors to her bedroom and the people would sleep on her futon in this tiny apartment. And it literally paid all of her rent. And yes. I was just like, okay, there's something there. That's really cool. And, yeah. you know, she just had to like, wash the sheets and clean the place and they weren't like in her room or anything like that. So I've, I've kind of always been interested in that. And then I went to a friend's housewarming party and I, I didn't actually know that it was an Airbnb, but I got there and she had just made this place so beautiful. And this was in Healdsburg, California, which is like a, like a little lesser known wine country. Um, okay. like 
near Napa. And it was just so beautiful. And she kind of told me some of the numbers of what she was making. And I was just like, <laughs> kind of <laughs> blown away. Because yeah. I've, I've bought a fair amount of property. So like, I feel like I have a mortgage calculator in my head. And I was just like, wow, you're really making a ton of money off of this. Plus, it was just a really beautiful space. I love the interior design element. It was just something for me. It was just, it brought together my marketing background, my interior design hobby, um, as well as wanting to passive income and like building long-term wealth through buying properties. Right. Um, so at that point, I actually, I used to travel a lot before I had a three-year-old. Um, I would be, probably be gone like every other weekend. So I started, um, I I bought this house and I, I laid it out with the thought that I would Airbnb it. And similar to my friend, I would lock my bedroom and just kind of mm -hmm. rent out all the other common space. But I had very few like personal belongings in the common space. Um, so I started off just doing that just to see if I liked it before I invested in a property. Um, right. And it was, it felt like very easy money to me. Um, I had really respectful guests. I mean, half the time it would feel like no one had even stayed in the property. Mm -hmm. They're very clean. Um, it was also only like a two or three person maximum. So I never had parties there or anything like that. But it was just, a, right. just felt like a great experience and it felt right to me. Um, so then I, I bought this property because I, I just had it in my mind. I was like, I want a wine country property. I think that sounds so cool. So in 2017, I bought this property and like set it up as an Airbnb and, um, yeah, I just recently kind of needed some remodeling. So I moved into it to give it some love. Um, and then in 2018, was it? I bought, I think it was 2018, right before the pandemic hit. Yeah. <laughs> I bought um, a condo in Kona, Hawaii. And that one has been doing, well, it was, it was actually shut down for about the first year that we had it because um, they weren't allowing visitors because of the coronavirus on okay. the big island. So that was a moment, a scary moment in time. But yeah. Uh, it's open now. I mean, the, the pandemic for that, especially that beginning part, that beginning time for Airbnb hosts was, it was like, you know, trial by fire. You just kind of had to figure it out. And I do mm -hmm. think hosts that made it through that time learned such valuable lessons on how to make sure their business is, you know, kind of recession proof or how to make sure that you are able to last because that was such a unique situation that god willing we don't experience again but um but yeah you know you just never, you just never know so but i didn't mean to interrupt you i just remember that time i was having flashbacks myself so <laughs> yeah yeah and now we're in like a great recovery period airbnb stays or short-term rental stays are up like extremely properties and are very unavailable in areas i'm actually shopping for my next short-term rental right now um and there's not that much inventory on the market because you know, short-term rental stays are, are booming right now. So yeah. it's, it's a great time to be back, like back in business after the pandemic. Yeah, absolutely. So tell me a little bit about that. You, it sounds like, buy all of your units, correct? I do, yes. Okay. <laughs> so that's pretty unique because, I mean, like what I teach, I do teach people about buying, but I mostly teach about, you know, leasing, rental arbitrage, or co-hosting, right? Mm -hmm. um, so tell me a little bit about your process with buying, because that's like my next step, right? I've bought property before, but I've never bought property specifically, even with over 20 um, units hosted, never bought property specifically for Airbnb. So tell me about like your process and how you, how you do that. I have like a spreadsheet calculator, so I can see like, there's a whole methodology. I actually have a video and stuff if people are interested in like my thought process and finding a place I can I can make that available for for viewers if they want it. Um, <laughs> I'm sure they would. <laughs> yeah. um, but but it's, it's a mixture of like, for me, it's very personal, like I want to stay in my Airbnbs, like, mm -hmm. and that's not everyone's strategy. But for me, that just is how it feels to me. And I, I want to like, really like give the place some love and make it feel the way that I want it to be when I'm staying in it, that it has like really <laughs> rich amenities and things like that. Um, so everything like I, I told you this first one, I wanted a place in wine country because I had seen my friend do it. And I just thought it was very cool. Um, yeah. And the second one, um, 
like, I don't know, having one in Hawaii is really cool too, because it's a super easy place to travel from like San Francisco Bay Area. It's like a quick five hour flight and then I'm in paradise. Um, unfortunately, yeah. I'm booked all the time, so I hardly ever get to go there. <laughs> <laughs> Good problems. <laughs> For, for me, I really love the long-term wealth that it's building to own the properties myself. And um, I'm fortunate enough financially that I can do that. And now I can take equity out of those properties to buy other properties. So it's a bit of a hard mm -hmm. start. It's a lot harder than, uh, not harder, but like it's a different path than doing like rental arbitrage or something like that. But um, in the long term, you have this asset that is, you know, real estate's always over time up and to the right, right? So even if I can only get that property to pay for itself, um, I'm making equity in the long term. Like this house, for instance, uh, I bought in 2017 and it's gone up hundreds of thousands of dollars in value. And it's not in like a very special place, if that makes sense. It's yeah. like it's kind of just in a like it's a le way lesser known wine country it's not in napa or anything like that it's in lodi california right. yeah. so yeah. and everyone's yeah. brother yeah that's <laughs> awesome so i know you are short on time i do appreciate you joining me um tell people where they can kind of find you find more information about you because you like people said in the comments you you're definitely dropping gems right and that's what i wanted <laughs> my audience to see because I've been following you for a minute I was like oh this girl knows what she's talking about and I'm a big believer in like getting to know other hosts even if I'm like stalking them or stalking them and not talking to them but I'm like oh her content is great you know so I've been following you probably like a year or more um and then we just reached out so um yes tell people where they can find you yeah, um, so I'm on Instagram at Alicia Arnold. Wait, Alicia Amber Arnold. And then my website is alishaarnold.com. So it's A L I S H A A R N O L D.com. Um, where else can you find me? I'm, I'm really big on Pinterest. Like I mentioned, I have a Pinterest account that has a lot of like, uh, if you kind of look at it, you can see my short term rental strategy on there. Um, I also, I have a short term rental class uh, that teaches people. It's not rental arbitrage. Like uh, I was checking through yours, which is really cool. I would love to like collaborate on something there. I feel like we have similar things, but it's oh, yeah. um, it's kind of how to set up the operations of your property, set up the physical space, and then get your online listing live. So just walk you through with like lots of videos and worksheets and things like that. So that you can find linked in my Instagram profile as well. That is uh, awesome. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. If you have more places we can go to. <laughs> I'm everywhere, but those are like my most fun places, I think, to follow along. If you're on Pinterest, I'm, I'm on there too. I think you can find all those links on my website to all of my social media properties. So if you check that out. And I would love to have another session with you. It's so great to just like finally meet you in person because I've also been following your content. I find it really inspirational. I'm always like, share, share, share. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, I like the idea of collaborating on something. So we'll have to, we'll have to chat for sure offline too. <laughs> Okay, awesome. Well, thanks again for letting me speak with you, you and your audience. And I'm looking forward to our next session. You are so welcome. Thank you for joining us. And I'm going to stay on for a little bit for those of you have, who have other questions. I know Alicia has to go. Um, so yeah, if you've got questions or if I happen to buy, thank you so much. Bye, y'all. Um, if you have questions that I may have missed, I'm going to scroll through and just answer a couple. Um, but if not, that, that was pretty much it. I just wanted to share. Like I said, I've been following Alicia for a minute. Um, I love that she really focuses on that social media piece, which I do as well, but she takes it to like a whole nother level. So I would definitely recommend checking her out. I think it's so important to learn from other hosts, right? Even if you've been doing it like I have been since 2014, they may know something that I might not know or may improve on something that I don't know. Um, so I love being able to bring on other hosts to talk to you guys and just share different things. So um, someone had asked how to get started. Of course, you can always check out Alicia's information. You can check out my information. I do have a free class um, kind of walking you through my process. You can check that out with the link in my bio. It's my free Airbnb class. Um, I just did a live one last Friday. I'm not sure when I'll do my next live one. 
Um, but that's why I come on live. So if you've got questions that, that you just want to know, um, you can join me here. It, and to answer your question, how to get started, right? You can go Alicia's route, um, which is like my next step, which is buying property. Um, and she did mention it's a hard start, right? Because you, you have to buy um, when you're buying, especially if it's an investment property, you're usually going to have to put more down, right? Like maybe a 20% down payment. You have to have that ready unless you're like the way that I'm looking to buy. That's a whole nother topic and subject. Um, I'm trying to buy from like motivated sellers, but that's a whole nother process. Um, but yeah, there are things that go into it, especially if you're an entrepreneur, you know, you need several years of taxes. It's not like you've got your W-2, but you can buy. And it's like she said, it is a great, great way to build wealth. The other way that I teach that she mentioned is rental arbitrage. I like to call it master leasing, but a lot of people refer to it as rental arbitrage. And that is literally when you go out, you talk to a landlord and with their permission, you lease their property and you use it for Airbnb. But you have to make sure you have permission. And this is where a lot of people get themselves into trouble because they try to go the sneaky route and rent this property and then they don't have permission and they get in trouble later on down the line like there was this huge story well huge in the airbnb world um a couple weeks ago another host that i follow was um she actually posted a picture of this um apartment complex in atlanta that literally had a sign up on the like entrance door to say hey we know that there are people um that you might be here for an airbnb that is not allowed in our complex we'll give you a $100 Visa gift card and help you find another place if you let us know who you're renting from. Something like that, like basically snitching. Um, and you don't want those problems because you don't want to have to pay the fees. You also, when you do rental arbitrage, you would have most likely spent a lot of money on the furniture and all that stuff because it's a furnished property. All that goes to waste. Like you have to find a place to move. You don't want those problems. So and teach you the right way to do it, right? How to make sure you have it in your lease, how to make sure you have a clause that says you can actually do this. But the beauty of it is it is less expensive um, or costs less than having to necessarily buy a property. Um, I'm not saying one is better than the other, it's just what your resources are. So that is a great way to get started. Um, the next way that I teach is co-hosting. And co-hosting is phenomenal um, because you are hosting someone else's property for them on Airbnb and you make a percentage of the bookings revenue. So every time someone books this person's property, because you are the actual host, you're doing the work of setting up the, I mean, there are different ways you can structure it. Um, but every time someone books that property, because you are the host, you get a percentage of the booking fee. So let's say you and that owner agree on 15% or 20%. Whatever that total booking is, you are going to make 15, 20%, whatever your agreement is. And that's a great way to get started because you don't have to buy, you don't have to lease. You actually don't even necessarily have to furnish because it's someone else's property. You're not going to furnish out of your own pocket. You might help them. Um, like she was saying, I, I love interior design as well. So I'll often help people set up, like my actual co host people that I host for, help them set up the property. And I get a fee for that as well, because I'm not setting it up for free. Um, but then I'm also hosting it for them. So again, it's just less out of pocket to get started. A lot of people like co-hosting as well, because it's both rental arbitrage and co-hosting are great ways to scale your Airbnb business. So if you know that you want to get to the point where you're hosting 20, 50, 100 Airbnbs, because that's the business model that you want to follow, co-hosting... Um, or, or rental arbitrage is a great way to do that, right? Co-hosting is nice because you don't have 100 leases out there, right? Um, but there's nothing wrong with having 100 leases as long as you're making data-driven decisions and choosing locations that you know are going to um, give you the revenue you need to cover your expenses as well as make a profit. So that is how, in a nutshell, <laughs> you get started. And I do teach in depth those strategies in my course, um, which is the B&B from scratch method. And you can, you can actually get it 70% off right now or start for $0 upfront if you um, decide to purchase with PayPal credit. Um, just make sure if, if that's what you wanna do that you select PayPal credit so you don't get charged to your regular PayPal account. Um, I'm so glad you're following now. I don't know if that was for me or Alicia, but either way, awesome sauce. 
corporate lease, how do I go about it? Um, yeah, that's kind of what I was talking about. You want to make sure that you have it all um, written out in the actual lease that you have a corporate lease. Corporate lease you usually would do with um, some of these like larger apartment complexes, property management companies. Um, and I give you the actual contracts and scripts that you can use to get those set up um, in the course as well. Any tips to get startup funding? So yeah, um, there are actually a couple ways you can do it. Um, one of the great easiest ways is if you have access to a 0% interest credit card. There are so many out there right now. Um, of course, you do have to have decent credit for most of them. But if you have access to that, you know, they usually give you 0% interest for like 18 months. So if you're wise with credit, you can use one of those cards, get set up, get everything started, and make sure you pay everything back from the profits that you're making. Um, and then you're just good to go. Another way is to actually um, use business credit. So if you have an LLC and you get your EIN and your DUNS number, I kind of show you how to do that in the course as well, then you can start applying for business credit. Then you also have a couple of different companies, um, whether it's PayPal, business funding, things like that, that will actually um, lend you funding based on your actual business model and what you're trying to do. So I actually have a big list of a bunch of those in the course as well, so that if funding is the reason that's holding you back, you can actually still get started just using some of these strategies. Um, and then another way is if you don't want to go that route, again, co-hosting, you really have very little out of pocket um, that you have to spend. The most you would be spending with co-hosting is maybe um, any tech tools that you want to implement for automation and things like that, which I show you how to do in the program as well. But like that upfront cost is so much like it's really non existent with co hosting. So that's something to consider as well. A lot of apartment complexes in DC do do co uh, corporate leases. Yes. Um, wholesale properties. Yeah, wholesale properties is um, a great, great way to actually purchase um, as well, as well as make money, right? So um, TS buys houses. Sounds like you're probably a wholesaler, or maybe you're a rehabber. Um, but I actually used to wholesale. I wholesaled for on and off for like almost 10 years. Um, but it's something I'm kind of getting back to because those are the skills that I use. It's been a while. It's probably been four or five years since I wholesaled. Um, but those are the skills that you can use to find those motivated sellers, um, find those discount properties. I feel like the game has changed quite a lot since I did it last. So I'm kind of like easing my way back into it. Plus, I was a wholesaler. I wasn't really buying, but this this time is a little different, right? So, um, yeah, that is that is a great method. Um, for those of you who don't know what wholesaling is, maybe TS Buys can give you more information. But um, it's essentially when you find properties at discounted prices less than market value minus repairs and things like that you get it under contract with that motivated seller and then you assign your contract to um, a buyer like a, a rehabber or someone who buys and holds and you make um, a fee for doing that work um, that's it in a nutshell there's like way more to it but that is wholesaling um, do people that do this the sneaky way what happens? Do they get fined or sued? Um, so most of the time, well, from what I know, you can, there are a couple things that can happen. Your landlord might be like, you just can't do this anymore. You need to pay regular rent. And then you got to figure that out. Um, you may need to break the lease. So you might have to pay like the break lease fee, whatever that is in your, in your um, actual contract. You may get evicted which you don't want that, right? You don't want that on your record. Um, it's just not, it's just not, it's not good <laughs> regardless. Um, some, you know, if you're, if it's a bigger apartment complex, there may be more um, fees and things uh, required of you versus maybe a private landlord. A private landlord is going to be probably more flexible. They may, they may be like, hey, you just can't do this anymore. You can just get one person and keep it moving from there. I mean, so I have always had it in my lease agreements, but I have had times where like a property manager, they change, you know, how um, 
apartment complexes can change property management. So I had that happen to me on one of my old Airbnbs and they were just like, yeah, we don't want this anymore. Um, and it was a whole complicated thing because I had it in writing, but it was all this drama. So what I did was I just ended up um, only doing travel nurses in that apartment um, and travel nurses stay for three, six months at a time. So it made it a lot easier. But I was able to do that because I had things still in writing. And that's that's the saving grace. That's what you need to make sure you have um, so that you don't have all those problems. Um, good stuff, appreciate it. Thank you so much, Count the Cost LLC. Um, you are welcome, TRM Property Group. Which card is it? Um, American Express has a card. Um, Capital One, I mean, there's so many. Capital One Venture Card, I think, has an offer for 0% interest. And I like that because um, it also gives you travel rewards. But you can look, if you have a business, you can look at, like, ones that are specifically um, business credit cards. Chase has one. Um, uh, the their reserve, I think they have one for business as well. They've got Chase Sapphire and, and Reserve. Um, but there are several out there. Um, you can just look 0% interest. You can do personal, but if you have your business already, do a business one. Uh, and that way you can also just like easily give your uh, statements to your accountant or CPA at the end of the year um, for all your business expenses, right? <laughs> I'm not a CPA. I'm not your attorney. This is not legal advice or tax advice. <laughs> um cool 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 what areas are good for atlanta i have not hosted in atlanta before um and i've only been to atlanta like twice so i cannot specifically answer that question for you what i can do is tell you that um there are a couple sites that you can do really good quality research on um one that i really like is air dna and another one is called mash visor and both of those will give you like heat maps to tell you, okay, this area is hot and on and popping. Like people who have Airbnbs right here are doing really well. People who have Airbnbs over here on the map aren't doing as great. Um, so you can make your decision that way based on what location you want. And I break that down in the course, like in super detail of how to actually use those sites. But that's really what you want to do is you want to make like I said, those data-driven decisions. Um, so you select a location that you know, based on the information and your research, does really well. This type of property does really well, right? It's going to get booked, um, you know, let's say 60% of the time or 70% occupancy rate. You know, those are the things that you want to look at when you're deciding on your location. Okay, answered how you get started. How do you get renters to let you mean, I think you mean, how do you get landlords to let you sublease? Um, yeah, so you have to present your um, plan to them, essentially. One, you have to get uh, landlords who are open to the idea and then present, you know, what it is that you're going to be doing to, for um, with their property. So um, really making sure you present a professional package to them and a professional presentation is step number one. And then it's a numbers game as well. So you have to remember that you're asking these landlords to do something kind of outside the box for a lot of them. Um, so you want to make sure that you've got all your ducks in a row and you have a really good presentation and you're just not like, I want to Airbnb your apartment or whatever, right? That's not a good look. So um, I do teach you how to do that in the course, but really you just want to make sure that you have a very good, solid presentation. And I do, I'm a big fan of private landlords. A lot of people love the big apartment complexes with the property managers and all that good stuff. Nothing wrong with them. I've definitely hosted there as well. But I love private landlords as well because they are generally more flexible. They're self-managed. It's a lot less red tape. It's you and that landlord, right? Like, bro, do you want to do this or not? <laughs> so, um, I mean, you wouldn't say that, but it's like that, right? So that is my suggestion airbnb is now becoming attractive to longer term tenants what are the pros and cons to anticipate with hosting those i think it is a super pro and i talk about this all the time people are looking for more flexible leases essentially right shorter term 
but long-term leases, if that makes sense. Like, I don't want to be locked into this place for 12 months necessarily, or I, I'm digging this. I'll live here for however long I want, but I love this setup. I love that I don't have to think about furnishing this property and I'm willing to pay for it, right? I think it's great. I think if, if it's if it's something that you can that you want to cater to, people who want to stay 30 days or more at your property, go for it, right? Why not? Because they're willing to pay your rate and then you know your calendar is booked for however long they've decided to stay. Um, so I love them. I, I've, I, like I said, I, I host travel nurses. I have a whole course on that. But I've even, especially with the pandemic, I had um, one of my guests stay with me from pretty much, I think she came in April and she didn't leave until like October because she wanted somewhere else to stay during when the pandemic hit. She didn't like where she was living. I don't know all the details, but she literally every month would just be like, I need another month. I need another month. I want another month. Cool beans, girl. Like, ain't no thing. I got you. And so that's great. I think it's, um, a, I think, it, no, I think not that I think, I know it's a trend um, because for a lot of people, we're in an instant gratification kind of generation and so if you can you find a place that's beautiful it's wonderfully set up you don't have to do the furniture you don't have to think about all that and it looks like you're staying at a you know five-star hotel but it's still cozy and it's in a nice neighborhood why not and it's in your budget and your price range why not right um so i think it's a great uh i think you're going to see a lot more of it airbnb has actually made it even more easy to do um, where they say you can like in your listings, right? When you set up your listing, you can say that you are catering to um, those longer stays, people who want to stay for a couple months at a time. So how do we find people who need to co-host? Um, I like to call it village search because you might be very surprised at um, how many people you know who might have property, who might be interested in Airbnb, but they have no knowledge or desire to learn how to host. Um, so I, I have a full section in the course on how to find co-hosts, but really I call it, I call that entire section um, on how to find your property village search. And the reason why I call it that is because you need to search your village. Like don't only think about the strangers, think about the people you know, because I personally have plenty of friends and, and it's been a while, like since college, that had property, right? I own property, I'm on, you know, several different points and um, friends, my, the second or third Airbnb I ever did was a co-host situation with a very good girlfriend of mine who happened to own a four unit um, rental building. And she lived in one, she rented all the others, couldn't rent one of them for a couple months. I mentioned this to her and so I co-hosted it for her. So I always say, think about your village because you just never know. But then I, I show you, like, if you don't have anybody like that, cool. I show you exactly how to find um, people in those situations. Okay. Um, oh, thank you, Mary. <laughs> Where do you find landlords? I kind of went over that less reviews though oh yes that's true when you have those longer stays you do have less reviews so that's a great point i would probably start with shorter stays so that you could get more reviews um so that was a great point all g zero all good vibes oh i can read guys <laughs> um, all right so yes um uh, that's pretty much it. That's all I've got. You can uh, you can start. You can check out my ebooks. Um, my ebook bundles fifty percent off. You can do my Airbnb course seventy percent off, or you can start for free upfront um, if you use PayPal credit. Please select PayPal credit if that's what you want to do, so that you don't get charged. Um, it's zero dollars and zero or zero payments and zero interest for six months. Um, so you get full access to the entire program. Um, but you don't have to make any payments or any um, interest for six months if you purchase with PayPal credit. Um, so it's it's not fully free. It's just that you don't have any payments or any um, interest for six months. You can do the same thing with my travel nurse course. Um, 
So my travel nurse hosting course is all about how to find um, book and then successfully host travel nurses specifically if that's like the area that you want to focus on um, and I have the same thing you can actually um, start that for zero dollars up front as well and you can get both courses together if you bundle the Airbnb course at checkout if you decide to add the um, travel nurse course you'll get an additional 10% off and you can do either one by paying in full or you can do the payment plan that I have for each or you can do PayPal credit. So that is where all my stuff is. You can also check out my free um, Airbnb class. Um, I try to put out as much information as possible for you guys. So that's all I've got today. If I wasn't able, oh, thank you so much for buying a badge, King Pops. I feel like I've spoken to you before. Thank you so much for buying a badge. I do appreciate it. Um, it's a great way for me to, you know, make a little shmoney while I'm on here and go buy some coffee or whatever. So I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, you can check out any of my stuff. I'll try to do more of these Q and A's and have more super dope guests on here like Alicia. Um, she was so good. She's got really great content. So feel free to um, follow her as well. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.